So the previous example showed how to connect a single customer to the upstream service provider network with two links. Now, it's quite unusual for an ISP to just have one dual-homed customer. And it's actually quite a valid and indeed valuable service offering for an ISP with multiple points of presence to actually make this a proper service for lots of end users. It's probably better for the ISP than having the customer multi-home with another provider. Although, when we talked about multi-homing as introduction, we did talk about connecting to two different upstream providers. But very often, network operators, certainly those with multiple points of presence, will offer this as a service as well. So what we want to do is look at scaling the configuration for the upstream provider. And by scaling, I mean simplifying it as well. So we'll use our chosen equipment vendors' best practices for making the configuration easier to manage on the router. So that means using templates, and in Cisco's case, using peer groups. You want every customer to have the same configuration, more or less. So let's look at the diagram. Now we have AS100 with links to, in this case, three customers. And the first thing that you'll notice is that each customer is living in the same autonomous system. We've chosen AS65534 for each of the customer ASs. Router E in the diagram is AS100's upstream, or one of the upstream links. And that, again, as before, removes the private ASs we're using and any customer sub-prefixes from the internet announcement. So how do we handle this one? Well, the customer announcements are exactly the same as in the previous example. We follow the same techniques. Using the same private AS, indeed the same AS, is perfectly fine. In fact, the IETF RFC 2270 documents this particular example, as was used by some network operators um, back in the late 90s. We can do this because address space is not overlapping. Each customer only hears the default route, so we don't run into any issues with BGP loop detection. One customer's prefix will go to the upstream provider, but the upstream provider is only sending the default route to the other customers. There's no need for one customer to see the address space that's being used by the other one. Hence, the loop detection in BGP doesn't cause any issue. And the nice thing about this is the upstream provider can template the configuration for all the router A's and router B's that go to the customer site. So this could help the customers with their configurations. And they're the same as in the examples we saw earlier. We've included some here just for reference. Router A1 might be using this slash 19 and a slash 20. And of course, the prefix list is the same as in the earlier example, allowing the 19 aggregate out as well as 1 slash 20. Same with the router B configuration. It allows the 19 and the other slash 20 out. But our focus is on the upstream provider now. Let's have a look at router C. What we've done here is created a peer group called BGP Customers. A peer group, if you recall, is a way of grouping neighbors that have the same configuration. So in this peer group, we're setting up AS65534, which is what we're using for each customer. Each customer is getting a default originate, because they all get a default route. And they're also getting an outbound filter, which only allows the default route out to the customer. Once we've created the peer group, we simply apply to all the customers that are connecting. So in the examples here, we have the three customers. Customer 1 gets the peer group BGP customers. And then we also have a prefix list customer 1 in, which is filtering the prefix we hear from our customer. It's very important, as we've learned earlier, to always filter outbound and inbound announcements. Never assume that your peer is going to do your filtering for you. So we have customer one, we have customer two, and we have customer three. And so on it goes. Each time this operator adds another customer, they just add that customer to the peer group, 
create a prefix list for the address space, and it's done. And this helps scale the configuration for the network operator. If we look at router deconfiguration, it's the same. In fact, it is exactly the same. And this is the nice thing for the network operator. They, again, don't need to worry about which link the customer is sending the sub-prefixes of the aggregate. They put on a standard configuration, the same peer group, and apply it to the three customers, as the slides show. What about router E, connecting to the rest of the internet? Well, if we assume that the customer address space is not part of the upstream provider's address block, then the outbound prefix list would, of course, need to list each prefix that each customer has. And we strip out the private AS, as we've done before. However, if the customer prefixes actually come from the ISP's address block, then we don't need to announce these sub-prefixes to the internet. The ISP aggregate is more than sufficient. Because the rest of the internet, again, does not care about the detailed traffic engineering between the customer and the service provider. So as the example shows, the router E configuration is just a simple announcement of the ISP's aggregate out. So let's just summarize this. If we're multi-homing to the same upstream provider, we're going to use a private AS. There really is no need for a public AS number, and it's quite possible that the regional registry policy may not allow the delegation of an AS number for this purpose. We're going to leak sub-prefixes -pre sub to the upstream provider only to aid our load sharing. It is really important as a customer that we announce our address block to the upstream provider. And also, as we've noticed, the upstream provider's border configuration to the rest of the internet is identical across all these situations. We're announcing only aggregates to the global internet, and we're making sure that the private AS numbers used for the customer multi-homing are not leaked to the internet either.